So I'll call this meeting of the uh, State Government Finance Committee to order. Um, welcome members. This is the first meeting of the year for this committee. Um, and what we're gonna do today is basically give introductions of the people that are here. And uh, um, we'll go from there. Um, just a few housekeeping things. Um, if you look, if you put your participants piece up there, you can see there's a raise hand button. If you wanna speak, uh, ask questions, click on the raise hand button. We'll keep that keep in um, order the number of people that have, have put that up so we can try and get to everybody. Um, the other thing is uh, we're gonna have rules coming. They're not quite done yet, um, but uh, one thing I'm, we're gonna try and do is have a 24 hour rule for amendments to the bills so that we can get them posted for the public to see. And uh, um, as, as much as possible, I'd like to keep it that way. Um, if we have something that comes up emergency, I'll try and um, work with uh, Representative Nash, who's the lead on this committee. And uh, if, we have to, if we have something that comes up that we need to deal with after that. Um, and with that, um, I'll start out that I'm Representative Michael Nelson. I represent House District 40A, which is basically the Southern half of Brooklyn Park. And this is my 10th term in the legislature. And uh, my second term is chair of state government finance. And I'll, uh, Representative Nash, if you wanna go next is the lead. Thank you, Mr. Chair, uh, Jim Nash. My fourth term just started. Uh, I represent District 47A, which is Western Carver County. And uh, this is now my seventh consecutive year serving on this committee. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, next, Representative Carlson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Representative Andrew Carlson, uh, representing District 50B. Uh, glad to be back on this committee. Uh, looking forward to the, the work ahead. Um, uh, 50B, of course, is uh, all within the great city of Bloomington. So glad to be here and representing uh, uh, the city of Bloomington. So thank you and um, looking forward to the work ahead. Thank you. And uh, next I have Representative Bonner. Are you on the committee here yet or? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. This is uh, State Representative Kristen Bonner representing Maple Grove and Osseo District 34B. I am thrilled to be on state government. Uh, I was on both the Government Operations Committee and Vice Chair for the Elections Committee last uh, cycle and am really excited to dig into some of the issues that Thank you. And next I got Representative Draskowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, good morning, everybody. Steve Draskowski, House District 21B. Um, I uh, am located in Wabasha, Winona, Goodhue, and a portion of Dodge County. Uh, Mr. Chair, I did pull over in my truck and I am hands free. I want you to know I'm following the law. And uh, I served on state government finance a long time ago, early in my um, tenure in the legislature when uh, Representative Kahn was chair. And uh, I've got some, um, some good memories of that. And uh, Mr. Chair, uh, you've, got a, you've got a bar to uh, meet there with Representative Kahn. Thank you. Um, I, I agree there, uh, Representative Kahn. I served with her on this, com on this committee also. And uh, yeah, yeah, she was, uh, that's a bar to, to try to reach. Next, I got Representative Elkins. Uh, hi, Steve Elkins, uh, District 49B. This is my uh, second term in the House and second term on this committee. Pleased to, uh, to be back. And uh, I live in uh, Bloomington. My district also includes parts of Edina, Eden Prairie, and Minnetonka. Thank you. And next, I've got Representative Greenman. Good morning, Mr. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my name is Emma Greenman, and I uh, was rec recently elected to represent 63B, which is South Minneapolis and Eastern Richfield. Um, and I am grateful to be on the committee. It's my first term um, and my first, my second committee hearing. So excited to dig in and get to work. Thank you. Um, next, we have Representative Claiborne. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am Jenny Cleborn and I represent District 44A, which consists of Plymouth. This is my second term and my second term on the committee. Excited to work with all of you. 
Thank you. Uh, rec next, I have Representative Kosnick. Hi, Representative John Kosnick from Lakeville. Uh, good to be on this committee for uh, the first time. Uh, fourth term member and look forward to working with the committee. Thank you, sir. Um, next, we have Representative Mason. And I don't know. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be on this committee. I did serve on the committee last session and I too had served on state gov with Representative Khan. And I represent District 51A, which is most of even west of 35E and all of Northern Burnsville. Thank you. And Representative uh, Mason is also the chair of the government, local government committee. And so we might be getting some bills up from, from her committee. Um, next I have Representative New Brindley. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm Representative New Brindley. The Brindley is new. Um, and I, I represent most of Chisago County District 32B. Um, this is my first time serving on the committee. Thank you and congratulations. I understand that was new and so um, welcome to the committee. Thank you, um, next we have Representative Pulowski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Jean Pulowski, I'm, I'm just a retired social studies teacher from Monona. Yeah. <laughs> I, heard, I, heard, I heard that yesterday. Um, I'm glad to see, have you on the committee. And then Representative Quam. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, sixth term, I've been either on the finance or the uh, policy side of state gov, uh, I think every one of the five previous and uh, have Olmsted and Dodge and looking forward to how we can help local uh, and state government and everybody recover from the situation we're in. Thank you, bye. And with that and I, we have our staff people that'll be well on the committee. And I'll start with uh, um, our committee A, our committee, um, yeah, committee, committee aide, um, um, Amanda um, Rudolph. Hi, um, I'm Amanda Rudolph, and I'm the committee administrator. Administrator, yes, I yes. couldn't find the word. Thank you. Uh, this is my ninth year at the House, and my first year was state gov. Last session, I was the committee administrator for gov ops, elections, and local gov. Thank you. And then we have our legislative assistant, uh, Sydney Spreck. Hello, I'm Sydney. This is my third year at the House um, and my third year with State Gov. I was with State Gov Finance the last two years. Thank you. And then we've got uh, our, our DFL researcher, Eamon. Hi, I'm Eamon Gallagher. Um, this is my second year both with the caucus and with the State Government Committee. Um, I'm the DFL researcher. And we have our Republican researcher, Brian. Mr. Chair and members, Brian Cook, uh, House GOP research, and hopefully this is the last time we hear from me in committee. <laughs> and then we have our nonpartisan re, uh, staff. We have Matt Gehring. Hi, Mr. Chair, uh, Matt Gehring from the House Research Department. We're the nonpartisan office that are, we're here to help you with bill drafting, amendments, and policy research as you need. So feel free to reach out um, as needed. And then we have our fiscal person, uh, Ms. Roberts. Hi, hey, Mr. Chair and members, I'm Helen Roberts. I'm from the nonpartisan House Fiscal Analysis Department. So I'm here to help you with anything related to the budget or fiscal issues, and I'll request the fiscal notes for the committee. And I have staffed this committee um, since the previous sessions or a century, <laughs> since I started <laughs> in 1997. Thank you. Um, with that, uh, members, um, like I said, a couple of major points on the rules. We, I would like to get the amendments the day before 9 p.m. Um, or 9, excuse me, 9 a.m. the business day before our hearings. Um, testifiers, um, if you have testifiers, I'd like to have them to the uh, committee administrator by 5 p.m. the business day before the hearing. Again, so all of this so we can get them this out to the public um, as much as possible. And then handouts again, 5 p.m. the business day before the hearing. That way, like I said, we can get public involved and we can have the public 
participate and know what we're talking about and see what we're talking about with having the um, those handouts available to them. Um, and with that, um, we have a, a presentation from Matt Gehring from House Research Department. And Matt, if you want to begin with that, that'd be great. Uh, Mr. Chair, can you see the um, handout that I've got shared on the screen? Yes, I can. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, Mr. Chair and members, I, um, what I'm going to do today is just walk through pretty quickly um, the sort of scope of policy jurisdiction of this committee with a focus on the agencies that you'll be hearing from over the next um, few weeks and months. And then Ms. Roberts is going to follow me and talk more about the finance aspects of the committee and the accounts that we have. Um, so the document that I have for you is uh, in the committee materials and it looks like a memo uh, from House Research that just lists all the agencies that are in the committee's jurisdiction. I'm not going to read it to you, but I'm just going to kind of walk through the, the individual agencies and highlight a couple places where I think you may be interested um, to, or you may have questions, um, and I'm happy to take questions as we go along. Uh, so this committee, um, compared to other committees in the House, is um, either lucky or unlucky to have a pretty wide uh, breadth of jurisdiction of types of agencies and boards and other entities that will be within, the, within your purview. Uh, so unlike other committees that are sort of very um, narrowly focused on a particular topic area, you really do have um, a number of different types of um, government entities that you'll be hearing from. Um, the first set that you see on the memo are sort of the big high profile um, governing entities of state government and that, that starts with the state legislature. So um, you'll hear from both the House um, you have jurisdiction for, or the legislature's budget, which includes the House, the Senate, and the Legislative Coordinating Commission. And within the LCC, uh, the Coordinating Commission is our offices such as the Legislative Auditor, uh, the Revisor of Statutes, the Re Legislative Reference Library, as well as the new um, Legislative Budget Office, as well as some other smaller um, boards and commissions and um, other sort of units within the LCC. All of those are, sort of fall under that umbrella. Um, and you'll hear more about that uh, in the weeks ahead. Um, in, in that portion of the memo, you'll see a couple, highlight a couple of laws that were enacted in 2019 that may be of interest to you. One is um, a report that will be coming uh, in written form to this committee um, uh, due by the end of this week uh, that relates to um, employment um, in state government of people with disabilities. So that's due on January 15th. And there's also a new law affecting the legislature that requires um, compliance with accessibility standards and IT services. Um, that's uh, required to be implemented by um, October 1st of 2024. And so that was part of a part of the package of um, state government finance policy that was enacted in the budget in 2019. Um, after the legislature, you'll see the governor's office as well as the state auditor, uh, attorney general, and secretary of state. So these are the constitutional officers um, of the state. Uh, within the secretary of state, of course, um, this committee has jurisdiction over election policy. And so you'll hear more about um, those aspects of the Secretary's work when he does his overview. Uh, but the Secretary of State also does um, sort of has some other functions, including um, dealing with business registrations, the open appointments process, safe at home program, and others. Um, and as I said, in the weeks ahead, you'll hear more um, from the Secretary directly about those types of things. Uh, the Campaign Finance and Public Disclosure Board um, is the board that you're all familiar with, familiar with as candidates for office. Um, they also um, deal with registration of lobbyists and administer um, the gift law, uh, as well as your statements of economic interest. And one note here, uh, just for your all, if you haven't done so yet, uh, your statement of economic interest must be updated by January 25th of this year. Uh, so make sure you get that um, turned in in time uh, to the campaign finance board. Uh, next on the list is the State Board of Investment. Uh, this is the board that's uh, relatively small in size, but has a a uh, fairly wide scope of um, responsibility. They administer the investment of state funds, which the largest portion of that are the state pension funds. And then the Office of Administrative Hearings is that, uh, it's an executive branch office is where um, administrative law judges are housed. And so they have responsibility over a number of um, functions um, of administrative law, including rulemaking, uh, contested case procedures within agencies, uh, and they have some smaller functions related to uh, fair campaign practices, data practices, uh, 
workers' compensation law and some municipal boundary adjustments. Uh, Minutes or the Office of Minute Services, uh, their official name, uh, is the uh, larger state agency that's responsible for um, executive branch IT services. I'm going to pause here for a minute because there are a number of things that I think you may be interested to know about related to the to, to Minutes work. Um, there have been a couple of uh, legislative auditor reports that have been um, completed or are in progress related to, to minutes um, that are either recently issued or will be coming soon. Um, in 2019, the legislative auditor um, uh, issued a, a sort of full-scale program evaluation of minute, and I've got links in the memo uh, to, for you to read that report if you're interested. There's also a, a, a IT, critical IT systems um, IT audit that the legislative auditor is currently conducting that's expected to be completed in uh, May of 2021, so just in a few months. And then lastly, I want to highlight the ongoing work of um, a Blue Ribbon Council that was appointed by the governor um, that's been looking at IT services in the state uh, over the last year or so. And there were representatives uh, Bonner and Nash are members of that committee uh, of that council. Uh, Representative Elkins has been uh, actively engaged as well. Um, so that's, um, uh, you'll, you'll likely hear more about that uh, group's work uh, in the months ahead. Uh, there's a link in the memo um, to the uh, full report that the, that council issued uh, last summer, if you'd like to read it. Uh, the, Department, the Department of Administration is one of the larger agencies that sort of serves a back office function for state government. So their primary responsibility that you'll hear about are, is in the areas of um, state contracting and purchasing, as well as uh, management of state property and facilities. Um, they also have another a number of other sort of smaller functions uh, for small agencies and for data practices and some other areas so you hear about um, those once they when they come um, and do their overview uh, to the committee. Uh, the capital area architectural and planning board, the cap board is the board that's responsible for administration of the state capital complex and preservation of the state capital itself. Uh, MMB is the next agency on this list uh, and MMB is the agency you'll be familiar with as responsible for the state finances and the state budget so you hear from the MMB commissioner pretty frequently uh, during budget negotiations, um, your committee has responsibility over the sort of administrative function of that agency and their sort of operating funds. Uh, the Department of Revenue is another um, fairly large agency. It's actually the largest agency in this committee's jurisdiction. Um, your responsibility in this committee is for sort of the back office administrative functions of revenue. So you're not having in, in this committee jurisdiction over tax policy or that sort of thing, but you have jurisdiction over the sort of function of the department in administering tax policy for the state. And then the next um, set of um, entities uh, all sort of, sort of fall under this uh, sort of similar umbrella um, in sort of this uh, kind of gambling uh, uh, type of category. So the Gambling Control Board is the board that's responsible for overseeing and regulating charitable gambling in the state. Uh, the Racing Commission is responsible for overseeing uh, horse racing and card playing at those entities in the state. And then the state lottery is, of course, responsible for administering the um, state authorized games of chance, the, the state lottery games that you all um, will be familiar and know about. Uh, the Amateur Sports Commission is another one of the commissions that um, fits in this committee's jurisdiction. They have responsibility primarily for um, the Sports Center in Blaine, and they also administer a number of um, sort of smaller amateur sports events and facilities around the state. And then the next category on the list are uh, Minnesota's eth what are called ethnic councils. So we sometimes hear them referred to sort of as a group as the ethnic councils. Uh, they're actually three separate entities. Um, one is designated uh, to provide a voice for people of, uh, people of African heritage. There's um, a council that is, um, exists to provide a voice for people of um, Latino heritage. And then for Asian Pacific Minnesotans, they're all three separate entities uh, and they receive funding through this committee. And then the Indian Affairs Council is sometimes lumped in with the ethnic councils, but is technically is, is a separate um, body uh, with a separate jurisdiction and, and um, scope of responsibility. Um, they'll also come before you uh, and get their operating funds um, through the state government bill. Uh, the Minnesota Historical Society um, is a quasi-state agency. They're um, located, of course, at the Minnesota History Center, just up the street from the Capitol. Um, they receive some um, grants and funds through outside sources, and they also get a portion of their operating funds uh, through this committee. Uh, the State Arts Board uh, is another one that receives funding through a number of sources, including this committee. They also receive uh, 
legacy dollars or legacy committee. Uh, and there's a um, recent report from the legislative auditor from 2019 that um, takes a look at their grant making practices. Um, and there's a link in the memo if you're interested in reading that. Uh, the Minnesota Humanities Center is another um, sort of quasi um, state entity uh, that receives state funding as well as some federal funding and legacy dollars to, uh, to support their work. They're a nonprofit organization that um, exists pursuant to a, a state law that exists uh, that are, and are responsible. They sort of have a mission to uh, further the study of humanities and enhance the, works of, the work of schools and colleges and cultural organizations in the state. And then next on the list is a series of smaller licensing boards for specific professions in the state. So there's the Board of Account Accountancy, the Board of Architecture and Engineering Land Surveying, Landscape Architecture, Geoscience and Interior Design, which is a mouthful. Um, they have responsibility for those professions uh, for sort of registration and licensing of professionals in that area. The Board of Cosmetologists, Cosmetologist Examiners or Board of Cosmetology, it's sometimes referred to, um, is also in this committee's jurisdiction and there is a Legislative auditors report that will be due um, uh, in April of this year uh, related to some of the work of their office. Uh, the Board of Barber Examiners um, is separate from the Board of Cosmetology, so they regulate the practice of barbering in the state. And then lastly is the state pension plan. So this committee um, will hear from um, the state pension plans and provide the sort of portion of, of the pension funds that are direct state aid. Uh, and then there's other policy and funding that comes through the pension commission um, and goes separately through a, a pension bill that this committee likely will hear, but sort of run separately from the state government finance budget. Uh, and so you'll hear more about that when you have the overview from the pension plans and from the pension commission uh, later on in the session. And Mr. Chair, that's the, that's the full list of um, uh, agencies that are within this committee's jurisdiction. And as I said, Ms. Roberts is gonna walk through some of the finances and how that works. Um, but I'm happy to take questions if, if you have any. Why don't we wait till the end and then we'll have, we can have the questions then. Uh, Ms. Roberts, and if we worked out you, um, your sharing of your documents. Yes. Um, Mr. Chair, can you, let's see. Can you see the pie chart? Yep, now I can. Okay, great. Um, I'm just going to give you a very summary level of the budget numbers for the committee. As Mr. Gehring's um, memo noted, we have quite a few agencies. Um, so trying to do this overview, I tried to keep it as simple as possible to start with. The first pie chart is gonna show you what the um, general fund base for this committee looks like distributed among the state government finance agencies. And you can see as the Department of Revenue is the largest, um, the next two are the legislature and those, the pension aids that go directly to the plan. So between these three, that those three um, accounts make up about 70% of the general fund base for this uh, committee. And these numbers, um, total to 965.3 million in spending based on the November forecast. This is the number that will be adjusted in the February forecast, and that will provide the starting point um, for the target for this committee. Um, and then you can see again, um, here's just the detail on um, the, th the largest agencies in the um, base of this committee. I'm going to move down now to some more detail that I'm not gonna walk through line by line, but this is just showing you um, the actual and estimated for the current biennium and then the forecast base, which is what the, the pie chart showed for the next biennium and then the dollar change um, for each agency. Um, and I've grouped it so you can see sort of following Mr. Gehring's memo, um, the different kinds of groups, the legislature, the constitutional offices, major executive agencies. Uh, a couple things I wanna point out in this change column. Um, usually if you see a big change, it's probably due to a one-time appropriation. As you can see under the Secretary of State's office, there's, um, it looks like spending is being reduced in the base and that's due to, to both the HAVA money match, one-time match, and then the presidential primary. But the biggest one I want to point out is this uh, big change in MMB not operating. 
And, and that is due to the two significant COVID related funding items that were placed in the MMB non-operating line, both the initial $200 million for the COVID-19 fund, and then in the last special session, the grants to uh, local businesses. So we track that spending in our area, even though it's not something that's really part of the operations of um, MMB. And then again, there's a grouping for the boards, commissions and councils, the occupational licensing boards, um, the various retirement funds, which include the aids both um, that go directly to the plans. And then also this MSRS piece is for the pre-1997 legislators and constitutional officers plan, and then the judge's retirement plan. So again, you'll see here, there's a $965 million um, base for the general fund for this committee. And then the next pie chart I'm gonna show you is showing you what the distribution would look like if you included all funds, not just the general fund. So these aren't necessarily funds that um, we have to appropriate. Um, they're special revenue funds, um, internal service funds, those sorts of things. And here's where the, the picture really changes for this committee, because you'll see right away that Minute becomes by far the biggest um, agency in terms of funds that's um, under the control of this committee. And then the second one is administration. And that's again, because they're an agency that provides services to other state agencies through their internal so service funds. So the largest part of these two agencies, it doesn't come through their direct general fund appropriation, but through services that they provide to other state agencies. Um, this will show you just some examples of what I was just talking about, where there are um, agencies that either provide services such as administration, there's a listing of their various internal service funds, um, and then, um, and the biggest being the plant management fund, but they also do the risk management for the state. They provide fleet services, central mail, et cetera. Um, this minute services piece is, actually I realize I'm, I'm only showing a part of minute services. This is the piece that they, uh, that minute services charges directly a fee for service to state agencies, but they also have a special revenue fund that's even larger that is for the various agency projects, et cetera. And then finally, another example um, that's not included in the pie chart is uh, Minnesota Management and Budget manages the statewide insurance program. So that includes both state agency funds and employee funds. Some final examples um, or flow, state, the state auditor gets reimbursements for local governments for audits. Um, the governor's office has interagency agreements for its government relations staff, um, the administrative hearings charges to local governments and agencies for administrative law judges. So, so again, these are some examples of how state government agencies um, interact and, and impact other state agencies. And just finally, I know this was really quick. I wanna provide some sources of information on state agency budgets. Um, first, there's a link to the base budget information for each agency um, on, the go on the MMB website. And this, these base budget pages are a really good source if you want to learn more about what an agency does. Um, second, there's a link to our department's uh, tracking sheets. And as we go through the process, I'll be posting a lot more detailed spreadsheets than what we just saw. Um, and those are updated throughout the session, but you can find them for other committee. Every committee is posted at this place. Um, if members want even more detail than what's in the budget pages, I have access directly to the budget system from MMB, so um, can drill down to some more detail than what you would see in the printed budget pages. And then I have a link to the legislative auditor reports, which is another great source for members if you're interested in digging into the background of an agency. Um, finally, my contact information. I'm available to all members to walk through any kind of fiscal issues um, once we get to the more detailed tracking sheets. I'm certainly available to help people walk through that because with the number of agencies we have, um, it's, it's gonna be a challenge, I think, to try to present that over Zoom. So it might be um, helpful to sort of do that in, in smaller sorts of walkthroughs. And that's what I have. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. 
uh, members' questions. Uh, if you want, if you if you want to ask a question, please try to use the raise hands function. Um, I know uh, Representative Draskowski and Representative Kosnick were driving in. They may not have that available to them. If you want to ask a question, maybe just speak up. Representative Elkins, I think I see your, your hand up. Yes, quick question. So I, I know that um, um, Ms. Freck has set up a uh, Microsoft Teams groups for us. Are these documents going to be uh, posted on the, uh, the Teams website for this team? Um, Ms. Spreck. I can um, look into that following this meeting. I haven't done that before, but I can work on it. It'd be an easy way for us to share stuff. Any other questions? Quite a bunch this morning. Okay. Um, just a couple of things here I'd like to. Um, Again, housekeeping things. If you're talking, and I know if you're driving in, if you're in your car, you may not be able to do that. But if you're talking and asking a question, I would like you to please put your video on again so the public can see these meetings are recorded. That way, the people can see who's talking. Um, and it's again, it's for courtesy of the public. Um, if you uh, like, I said, if you want to, if you want to talk, raise your hands with the raise hands button so that we can. Keep a track of that and going forward, um, we're going to be having more rules. The rules will be coming out and be handed out to everybody in the coming up in the future here. And uh, and again, the handouts are also on. If we go to the web page and uh, under the, our meetings, if you go to the house web page under meetings and you click on us, the documents for the that, that have been turned in are on that page and can be accessed that way through the internet. Um, so the, all the, the stuff that you saw, that uh, um, the two presentations, both from Ms. Roberts and Mr. Gehring, were on that web page and, and could be accessed there. Um, with that, are there any other questions or anything else I'm, anyone would like to, to say? I'll look to the Quam. I see your hand is up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And because of the uh, diversity of quality of broadband across the state, um, sometimes having the video on off uh, pixelates and also has uh, voice issues. So some of us that do a lot of these meetings uh, have been in the habit of, uh, of not uh, including that um, just for, for information. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and I understand that too. There's, there's also uh, maybe a surprise to some people, but we do have some of those issues with, with not lack of broadband and lack of high-speed internet in some areas in the metro area. So that, that is not just a com not just a, a thing that happens in the outstate, but as much as possible, if you can, when you're speaking, if you have your, your camera on, that way we can we know who's talking, and uh, if it's a, if it's a if that, if that's a problem with we can we can like I said we can deal with that too and I we can be understanding but as much as possible I'd like people when they speak to have their camera on so we can see them. Um, any other questions or any other comments? I don't see anybody coming up here. Um, members just so you know and this will these will be posted but the next meeting will be Thursday and uh, one other thing that I'm, we're going to do here because of the, of the limitations we may have on Zoom is we're not going to be doing a lot of overviews like we have in the past, partly because of on Zoom that they can be boring and they can be dragged out. Um, even when you're in person, sometimes they can be boring, especially for people that have been on this committee before. Um, but we're going to ask um, people to come in and, and, and have, actually have business before us come and do that business. Um, so the next meeting is the 19th, this Thursday, and or, wait a second, no, I got, I got my date wrong. This Thursday is the 14th, and we're going to have the uh, presentation by the state auditor, and that presentation is going to include their budget request for the upcoming session. Um, again, next Tuesday, the 19th, we're going to have the Office of the Attorney General in, 
and the Secretary of State in. And again, they're going to do a short presentation about their, their offices, but we're also going to, they're going to be doing their budget requests for the upcoming session. And then on the 21st, we're going to have the Pension Commission in and, um, and then going forward from there. Uh, so members, hopefully we can be prepared, um, be on, on, on uh, the committee early so we can get started on time. And uh, if you can't make the meeting for whatever reason, or if you have an issue, if you're driving in or, or whatever, um, if you can make, make aware of that made aware of with the uh, legislative assistant or the committee administrator so we know that, we, that way we can, we can have some accommodations for people if we need to. Um, again, any, anyone else have anything they want to say or ask or talk about? Um, otherwise, uh, member, we can adjourn this meeting and uh, um, I look forward to seeing you all this Thursday the 14th. If not, members were adjourned. Thank you for, thank you for being here this, this morning.